Alan Schwarzko. Okay. When Broadway, like the whole rest of the entertainment business, caught the nostalgia bug for the supposedly more innocent days gone by, some smart person signed up Patty and Maxine Andrews to star in Over Here, which is sort of a musical memento of the 40s. Well, it's been nearly sold out since opening night. Ladies and gentlemen, the sister on the right, I think, Maxine Andrews. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You all know each other? <laughs> Welcome. Hello, Maxine. Maxine, can I give you your diamond award? Well, that's real for thing, what you did to thing. win World War II. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, at least we smiled through, well, most of the time we smiled through World War II. Well, you made a lot of people smile, and you were very important, I mean, to that whole decade. But the thing I wonder about is there are so many people in your audience that over here who obviously weren't... Uh, aren't old enough to have been around during the 40s and and yet they just loved you and Patty when you came out they they gave you a standing ovation and then after the show closes after the final curtain you come out and ask people if they want to hear some of the old tunes and everybody goes wild and some of the kids are 15 and, and 20 and they just weren't around in 1943 why uh, I had a feeling about four or five years ago that something was happening because our record royalties picked up and uh, we started getting a lot of fan mail from uh, younger people. And it was most interesting because they would say that uh, uh, they'd been raised on our music. Mm -hmm. and, and another wonderful thing, too, is that they always referred to us as Maxine or Patty. They never, ever said, Dear Miss Andrews. And um, uh, it was like just to get off of the subject for a moment for about two years after Laverne passed away. Um, I took a job up at a small college up at Lake Tahoe, and uh, though I was vice president for two years, I taught 15 hours a week. And all of the students up there called me by my first name. And um, the president thought that was a terrible, disrespectful thing. And I said, well, no, because their parents always knew us. I think we were probably one of the only harmony groups that uh, really were identified by our first names. It was always Patty Maxine and Laverne Andrews, or if I was lucky, I would get Maxine, Patty, and Laverne. <laughs> if Laverne was lucky, she'd get the first billing. How, why did you come back to show business? I mean, how'd they get you to because come back? Because somebody asked me. <laughs> That's why I came. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, we've done everything, really, in, in show business, and uh, we've had a fantastic career. We've been extremely fortunate and blessed in, in that respect. And uh, the only thing we had never done was a Broadway show. And we were dying to do a Broadway show, and many years ago when um, I think Marla was probably that high, <laughs> she doesn't remember that I remember her when she was about that high, um, we tried to interest uh, people in New York uh, to do producers, to do, we, at that time we wanted to do, this oh, probably goes back to 1943, we wanted to do a modern version of Cinderella. And uh, nobody was interested because... Which uh, of you was going to be Cinderella? <laughs> well, naturally, I have to be the girl in the middle, right? <laughs> uh, we really hadn't thought of that. We just thought that our kind of music on Broadway would start a whole new trend. And uh, Broadway wasn't ready for it. At least the producers weren't ready for it. So uh, I had to wait about... Uh, Patty and I had to wait about 30-some years before we... We made that stop between the Piccadilly Hotel and the stage door of the Paramount to the stage door at the Schubert Theater. How do you feel about uh, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, for instance, being a, a, a very current hit record? Well, of Bette course, I'm, I'm thrilled with it, and I think Bette is a, is a marvelous performer, but let me tell you a little thing about two years before Bette did it. Um, a great comedian by the name of Carol Burnett did it, and she did it on a television show, most brilliant. Um, I don't mean to put down Bette's uh, version of it, but the thing that thrilled me with Carol was that I, went, I was invited to the studio and it was to be a surprise for me. And I sat in the audience. She'd worked a whole week on just doing Laverne and then just doing me. And she had all the movements and everything down pat. And so when, when I went to see it, she was doing Patty as the last thing. And of course it was on the screen. And so they lifted her image onto the screen and I almost cried because oh. she looked so much like oh. Laverne and so much like me and so much like Patty and she sang all of the parts and of course being a harmony singer I'm very sensitive to people who sing in and out of tune. How do you feel about all the female impersonators doing Carol Channing? I mean it's probably the most 
the most popular one of Isn't all the actors. It was it's Judy Garland for a while, now it's you. It's the greatest compliment in the world, you know, because uh, I used to, in my one-woman show, I did uh, Marlena Dietrich and Bridget Bardot, and I know what it comes out of. It comes out of adoring them, out of That's loving right, them yeah. dearly. But all these, what do you suppose is the matter with me? It's all men that are doing. <laughs> do you think I have a glandular misconstruction? <laughs> <laughs> but I, this Craig Russell, it's only, oh, but he's much prettier than I'm. He's soft. <laughs> My gosh, he's got dimples. And he's so sweet and, and soft. You just want to squeeze him. You're and he's with buttons here. They'll, you'll get dimples. Well, no girl is as feminine as Craig Russell. <laughs> when he's, really, I, it's an He'll be honor. happy to hear that, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk some more when we come back right after this. <laughs> <laughs> My, my guests, from either left to right or right to left, depending on your perspective, Marlo Thomas, Carol Channing, Maxine Andrews, and Marlo, I forgot to ask you one question that I wanted to. That girl was a huge success. Why did you leave it? I mean, here you would, you would uh, cut this new ground in TV with a single girl living yes. alone the first time ever. Uh, five smash seasons. And well, we did it for five years, and we had really done every story possible. By the fourth year, uh, when we sat down for the fifth year story conference, we tried to think of what else a single girl would do in New York. I had had every job. I had been a singing chicken. I had, had a, a singing mop, a dancing washing machine. I mean, every possible job a, a single girl could have. I'd been mugged in the park. I'd had an obscene phone call. I'd been engaged twice. Absolutely everything. And I thought if we, we, they asked us to stay on three more years. And I thought if we did, we would just drive it into the ground. We had. We left when it was fresh, and we had done every story that we wanted to do, and if we had continued, we would have killed it. And I think you have to know when the time is to leave, or else you, the memory of it is something fresh and wonderful. I love that show. I see it on television, and I'm proud that we killed ourselves, and we did. <laughs> My producer, Bill Persky, one time said to me, because I was to kill myself on that show, and he would say, Marlo, this is not a cure for cancer. It is just a television <laughs> series, you know, because it meant so much to me. And I'm glad, you know, that I worked that hard, but if we had continued, if you milk something, you have to know when it's over. Well, that girl never got married, and, and you're not married now. No, no. I mean, Herb is, is your boyfriend, I mm -hmm. guess it's, you could say, America. Yes, Donald Herb Hollinger was my boyfriend on that girl. <laughs> what about your, your old world, in quotes, parents? I mean, don't they ever give you a lot of pressure, say, Marlo, it's about time? Yes, my, my parents very much want me to get married, and I don't blame them. I mean, if I were a parent, I would want my child to be married. There's, some, there's a feeling of, I mean, that that's the way you'll be protected. Do you know? I mean, I, my parents are really darling people, and they love me, and I can't blame them for wanting to know that I'm taken care of. It's hard for them to believe that I'm taking care of myself, even though I do. But my mother will always want there, if I were a boy or a girl, I think. It's, I don't think it's a thing about being a girl, really. She, my brother and sister are both married, and my parents very much wanted them to be with somebody that they knew loved them and protected them, as they have all these years. And I can understand why they want me to. I, but we're still, we still get along anyway. In, in Thieves, you play, uh, uh, ironically, a married lady who's on the verge of breaking up with her husband. Yes. And uh, but you don't, though. No, so it has a happy a ending. Happy ending. At the end, I love it when we get back together and, and I hear some of the women in the audience going, oh, I mean, I just <laughs> love that. I really do. I'm really hung up on, on, on listening, on hearing all of that. It's but, so it, terrific. It, yes. The audience I was in, there was, there was a, a guy that I heard uh, most vociferously sitting right behind me, a real talker. I just really hate to go to a movie or a play and have a talk. But he's saying, Wow, she's some dish. Look at those legs. Wow, wow. I never noticed those legs when she was on TV. Boy, she's some piece of change. She's going oh, on and on and on. <laughs> so I, was, I, I wasn't quite sure how to respond because you're saying very flattering things, but I couldn't hear the dialogue. Yes. But you're, Carol, you're friends with, uh, with the Kennedy family, I know, and you do so many benefits. Uh, you do benefits and benefits. Marla, you do lots of benefits, too. You've done we all do. Yes. You really do. Because we know if we don't do the That's benefits, right. who else is going to help? Except Geraldo. <laughs> yes. We, we all do. <laughs> really? do. Do you see that as, as using your, your talent and, and, and your art uh, as an instrument for social change, kind of to make the world a better place, to, so everyone could come to the theater, maybe? Well, if nobody else can do it, that's our obligation. 
Well, it's I mean, the one thing we have to give. I mean, yes. if you're terribly rich, you give money to help a cause. That's right. So we you give sing, what you we sing. can if give. You do what it is, exactly. Can do. You're but, you're at the Kennedy compound in Hyannis, yes. getting ready to uh, work for the mentally before. retarded. Yeah. And and so funny. I called you kind of the Lou Gehrig of the stage, but uh, Eunice feels the same way about you. She feels that you, Eunice Shriver, she feels that you're really the the stand-up Iron Man. They they have they have a sailboat, a little teeny sailboat that is we went out in a 30 mile gale and the darn thing is capsizing the, the picnic sandwiches got all wet Eunice was holding the sail together because it was a split in the wind and we were fighting and everything was going overboard and then Ethel came along in her boat with 18 Kennedy children and she came along and said let's race and she started to race and then Eunice lost her dollar ninety eight hat in the water and then oh we gotta go round and round and get that hat and I said Eunice I'll buy you a dozen of those hats let's just get back so Eunice said no no I gotta have that hat so they were all these Kennedy's arms and legs in the water Water, getting cut up by the boats and everything and they got the hat and they came back I just so while Eunice is holding that sail together she stood there and said Carol how do you do all this work that you do you do all these benefits and all this theater and everything how do you do I would rather do ten benefits than that one sailboat ride I got off that boat just shaking it was just terrible it's the worst thing very ever energetic doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The word. And, oh. and it, <laughs> Assuming Lorelei ever closes, and I, I don't know if that's an assumption we can fairly make, uh, what would you want to do after that? Well, I have, oh, we're going to go to London probably. Uh, uh, Bernie Delphon, Bernard Delphon, has the Drury Lane Theater there, and that's where I appeared in London before. And he says he'd like to have me back again. He said, if they like you in London, you must come back before they forget you. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we're going to bring it there. And then Ross Hunter has a movie he's getting together, and, and there's television and, and things. I was wondering, do you ever suffer from an identity crisis? I mean, you were, like the Andrews sisters has always been kind of plural. Uh, and and you, they knew you by your first names, but they they associate you in their minds. I think as a as a group, but even even now the Andrew sisters. It, it, it was it's terrible. It was terrible. It's not as bad as it used to be, but uh, for many many years it was really really terrible, and actually uh, it was part and parcel of our breakup in the early 50s. Uh, it was that with that unconscious fighting for identity, and. Um, we were apart for oh, maybe a year and a half or two years. And then when we got together, we laughed at all of the things that we had thought were so. Of course, we had a lot of problems at that time. Our mother died unexpectedly, and a year later, our father died. And uh, we had a lot of, a uh, couple of divorces in the family. And, and uh, it was like our, the bottom of our world had fallen out. But mostly it was we wanted to know, each of us, who we were. And so when we did get back together, we decided one very important thing, that uh, because we were individually so different, that socially we would never socialize. We get, and we get along much better that way. Uh, Patty is married, very happily married, and so she and her husband go their own way. I go my way, and when Laverne was alive, she and her husband went her way. And we remain uh, extremely good friends because our love for each other is very deep. But. Um, the the it was a big it was a big identity problem. Well, everybody knows who you are now. Everybody knows who, who all am of I? you are. <laughs> Maxine, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Three of the brightest stars on Broadway. Thank you all for being with us. I know you have curtain time. You got to yeah, split. Up, right. But thanks for being on. Really, Thank all of them. You. I love them. Um,